to our first ever Spreaker and YouTube W2M Extra. And Gary, why are we doing this special first time extra? Well, simply put, everybody, hell has frozen over. That's right. From Las Vegas, Nevada, the WWE Network was actually announced. It is official. It's happening, folks. So, yes, it... it, it yeah, I'm sure that uh, all the demons are frozen because <laughs> I'm looking out there and it's pretty cold. Uh, but guess what, guys? This is going to be something very exciting. It's a big deal because all your wrestling needs and wants are coming your way. That's right. For only $10 a month, you'll get to enjoy everything WWE. But we'll break all that down and more. Uh, guys, I mean, this is a big deal, a big announcement tonight. Vince McMahon, you know, you saw how proud he was to actually get to say the words. You know, WWE Network is official. What did you guys think about the whole show, or I call it a show, but the whole hour-long press conference and everything that was in, in detail? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, they rolled out every big star they possibly could. Uh, <laughs> Stone Cold, they had Shawn Michaels up there. Uh, I mean, of course, they had Triple H and all that, but... I th it wasn't bad. I, not a bad way to spend an hour and be surprised constantly at all the crap they're throwing at you for ten bucks. Yeah, uh, as someone that is a uh, video game journalist, uh, obviously being on YouTube, we uh, should say that thank you for uh, listening. I know there's nothing to really watch, but maybe one day we'll get into the video stuff. Yeah, um, one day. <laughs> of course, the, our host is Gary. He's the one that always talks uh, most of the time. I'm Sean, and the person that you just heard is Paul. Um, we all contribute to a site that's called DirtSheets.com. It's coming up in the world. We're we're still trying to get more content on it. I'm a 41mania.com wrestling zone and game zone writer. Um I've been to uh, an E3 event before, and this kind of felt like an E3 press conference type thing. You had, you know, Vince come out and announce the thing, like you would see a Reggie fils or, you know, uh, previously a Don Matrick or a uh, Jack Trenton, whatever. And then you'll have Stephanie kind of take over. She announces a lot of the shows, and then, then the people that are supposed to talk, like you see in all these other press conferences, they talk. You have big stars, as you saw with Stone Cold and Triple H, and it kind of felt like that. As a, and it was at CES, so you know it's a big trade show. But it was it was fun to kind of just be a fan again and experience, as they said, another game changing event. And this really is a game changing event. It's a some people are saying it's the end of pay per view right now. Um, I was able to find out that the UFC. Uh, Digital Network will not include their pay-per-views. So that's something that WWE already has a big deal on. 
Yeah, that is a big, you know, deal because, I mean, I, this is something that WWE fans have been waiting and wanting. They're getting it, and I'm sure a lot of the UFC fans are clamoring for the same thing, and the fact that they're not getting that, it, it is a big deal, and I think it's going to show uh, eventually. Um, but, you know, before we jump into this whole, you know, thing, and I, I just want to uh, say that this is something that me and Sean, uh, and Paul have all talked about for a long time. Uh, so excuse us if we get a little excited about each thing because, I mean, honestly, we've read a lot of the dirt sheets, a lot of the backstage news that could be happening, and the fact that a lot of the things we're talking about are going to actually happen, we may get a little excited. Sorry about that. So uh, anyway, well, Sean, I think you have an intro song or music for us before we actually jump into this thing. Eh, it's yeah. nothing special, but that's how they started the press conference. So ah, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Hey, and that will probably be what you'll hear, you know, during the network, you know, every intro to whatever shows you're watching or pay-per-view. That'd be pretty cool. Um, well, let's talk about this. Let's break this thing down, guys. You know, this whole thing, the network was touted as the first, okay, uh, 24-7, uh, basically, you know, digital plan, the streaming. Uh, it's its own network. And so let's talk about all the different things they're going to have involved on this. It's going to be an on-demand library. They're going to have original programming, as well as they're going to have other premium content for us all to share. But let's talk about some of the things that are actually, you know, something we get to see on cable TV on a regular basis that they're actually going to enhance for us because we have Raw and SmackDown that are general. Uh, we also have NXT that we watch. We have to watch that on Hulu. It sounds like this is all going to change once we get this. Kind of tell us how it's all going to change. Uh, as far as what they put out there and what I've read since the announcement and all that, they're going to throw NXT on there. They're throwing main event. Uh, I think they're going to have Total Divas on there as well. Uh, and then they're going to have replays for everything right after it's over, at least for Raw and SmackDown. I don't know if they will for NXT or Superstars or anything like that. Yeah, everything that you see live is going to be on demand as soon as it's over. Right. Wow. And, uh, oh, yeah, no doubt. And there, there are a lot of... You know, because most people are already watching football when Raw is on, so now you don't need to worry about taking up DVR space anymore if you get the WWE Network or anything like that, which is probably a handy thing to have, because uh, DVR space is premium these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not kidding. You're the truth right there. And, and it's exciting for me, especially. I know Sean as well, uh, because I mean, we use Hulu, and I, Paul, I'm not sure. Do you use Hulu to check out NXT? How do you? Do I do, that? yeah. Okay, so we all three use Hulu. And I don't know if this is going to make any, you know, changes in Hulu or what's going to happen and how that, you know, partnership is going to work with WWE. But it's going to be so nice just to be able to sit there. I mean, you already do it with Hulu. At least I do. I'm not sure about Sean. I use my PlayStation. I use my smartphone. I use all these different devices to watch WB content. And now we're actually going to get this, but we're going to get expanded. I mean, I can actually now watch SmackDown and Raw both while I'm laying in bed. I've never had that opportunity you know, I've always had to sit on my couch and watch it on the DVR. Now this is going to be so nice. It's going to be so comfortable. Uh, but the other thing is, is it's going to work for a, a various devices, not just for that. Uh, it's going to work for PS3, PS4. We're going to have it on our smartphones, your computers, uh, tablets. Um, I believe Xbox One will eventually be getting this content. Xbox 360 will get it day one. Day Xbox one. one will get it in the summer, along with the Samsung Smart TVs. Um, all the Apple devices will get it day one, and uh, Roku will get it day one. So you people that don't like to use cable at all, you will have the WWE app. So that, that should be awesome for you folks. Exactly. Now, I have another question for you guys. Now, they're also going to have a pre-show to Raw and SmackDown. Of course, like Paul said, they're going to have a post-show as well with recaps. Do you think this is going to be something that's going to be used a lot? Because, I mean, if it's streaming, if it's something where you can just click, hey, I want to watch Raw, click, I can watch Raw. Do you think the pre-show is really going to matter? Or do you think it's just going to be there for the fans who just really can't wait for Raw to start at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock? I imagine the pre-shows are going to be there for people who just leave the WWE Network on all day so they have something different to watch, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, I, uh, they, the, they don't... The, yeah, oh, go sorry, ahead, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they don't really appeal to me so much. I, I do watch the pay-per-view pre-show, but uh, I don't really watch... Like, if they're going to do one for Raw or SmackDown, I don't see that being a huge appeal for me, personally. 
Well, you know, I think as JR said, they're going to have to change how they do these uh, pre-shows. I like the round table thing, but I guess you'd have to make it a little bit more insidery. And they said this, uh, Stephanie said this, they're going to try to make you feel like you're kind of, you're going to see some of the wrestlers getting ready. Uh, you're going to see some of the pre -sh pre match, you know, how what they do and stuff like that. It's not just going to be what you see on the pay per views, where it's just three guys and Josh Matthews talking about the matches that are going to be on, and then a bunch of highlight videos. You know, so if they're going to do that, kind of like with the what they did with the backstage fallout, now it's going to be the post show. I think I'd be more interested. It's just. The the pre show thing, most of the time the pay-per-view, I'm just like, Okay, I'm waiting for y'all to get to the mats because I have to cover this. Other than that, I don't really care, you know. Uh, well, here's another question. It, basically for you know, pre show and maybe post show. Dark matches. Are we getting an opportunity, do you think, that we we'll actually get to check out some of those dark matches that are happening, or do you think they'll still keep those away from the T V screen? I don't know. I think they'll probably still keep them away from the TV screen. It's very possible, uh, but it, it just, I don't know if that's going to change so much immediately. It might later. I don't think it will immediately, though. I would assume that now your dark match will be your pre-show match. Or they'll just have it be an extra... Basically, at the pay-per-view, it's your get-ready-for-raw match or whatever instead. Okay, what about so, the ex extended, you know, the, the stuff that happens after Raw goes off the air? You know, everybody goes to the arena. They get to enjoy just a little bit more, 15 minutes more of Raw, which us at home don't get to see. Do you think we'll get that content as well, or do you think they kind of hide that away? Because sometimes that stuff is just, you know, centric to whatever town they're in. Yeah, I mean, that's why I don't think they'll do, you know, a pre-show or, you know, a, the show the dark match or the aftermath stuff, just because, I mean, that's... It's like the added bonus of going to the show, and it kind of ruins... I mean, why would you want to go to the show at that point if you can watch it all at home? It's going to kill your live attendance. So I would think that would be one of the incentives to keep uh, keep wanting people to go to uh, live shows. Because that's the problem the NFL's having now, is people want to watch it from home instead of going out there in the elements and all this other stuff, and that's why they're having you know somewhat of a trouble with ticket sales. Yeah, but WWE still has house shows that the NFL doesn't have, and if everything in the NFL is broadcast... Every single little event is on NFL Network. It's on ESPN. It's on on the other ch the uh, channels. They have what like probably about like 20 shows just dedicated to the NFL through various channels. I mean, WWE doesn't have that. That's why the network is coming along. Uh, I understand totally what you're saying about the after dark match main event. But maybe this will make WWE have to change that. A dark match main event because they'll know people will just turn it off as it's going to be the same one every night. Um, who knows? Uh, they may just keep that away and all you get is like backstage promos and and stuff like that with the wrestlers. So yeah. Well, in, in in one of the things, just briefly, I know we got a lot, a lot to talk about, but you know, like CM Punk a few weeks ago came out in his underwear, literally his underwear, not his trunks, and did a Spooner Rooney. That may be something they want to keep away from cameras because of certain reasons, maybe, uh, especially with the HD camera in your face. Yeah, they may not. Or want to show they all might that. not let him uh, come out in his uh, skivvies. I know. <laughs> they know that the, uh... Uh, but, yeah, we're talking about <laughs> cameras are around. Yeah, they don't really get a chance or a choice sometimes with him. But anyway, uh, well, let's move on. We got a lot to talk about. So ten dollars a month. This is going to be really cool. For $10 a month, guys, we are getting all the pay-per-views, every one of them, including WrestleMania. So they're not avoiding well, we that. We should include that there is a six-month commitment, and WWE has not outlined. This is the one thing which is just like what they do at E3, which I laughed at. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, Xbox kind of told you that whole thing about they were going to have the digital-only stuff, and then they changed it like two weeks later. WWE didn't really tell you what that six-month commitment is, whether it's $60 up front, which means you're basically paying for WrestleMania, and they don't lose any money on WrestleMania because you pay for the pay-per-view, and then you get all the other pay-per-views for free, or it's $10 a month, and you can't unsubscribe until you get to that six-month. 
So the only thing that sucks is paying sixty dollars a month up front might be a little bit of a thing for some people. Exactly. Um, I'm starting to think about you know okay, I'm gonna have to kind of maybe uh, save a few extra bucks here and there just in case it is up front. You know. Yeah. Well, I would hope not, but you're right. It could be that situation, and you know, I, hopefully for most people it won't though. Um, we'll talk about some of the original content in the library that we're going to have, guys. Uh, they're going to have content from WWE, WCW, and ECW. Uh, their pay-per-views, of course. And, uh, you know, I think they also mentioned that Monday Night Wars will be a part of this Well, library. they said all of the old pay-per-views, WWE, so. WCW, and ECW, day one available. So Gary's wow. going to be going crazy with those WCW Halloween pay-per-views. Halloween Havoc, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, man. Just yeah. skip the one with Ultimate Warrior and uh, Hogan. Yeah, I remember that one. Gosh, man. <laughs> anyway, so I mean, are you guys excited about this, getting you know all these pay-per-views from ECW and WCW? I mean, you've seen a lot of the WWE ones, though. Yeah, uh, for me, that's the big selling point. Uh, the more... Especially when you vary it out across all the various tape libraries that they have, like you know, I I listed off a whole crap ton of them that I know they own on Monday show. Uh, but you know, when they start adding all those other promotions in, and you start getting full shows from them and classic matches and all this other stuff, I think that's when you're really going to see the network shine. Just because there's when you have that much content on there, it just it makes sense at that point. Especially if you're a huge wrestling fan. Or you remember something from way back when you're like, God, I love that match between you know the Von Erichs and the Freebirds from World Class back in '84 or something like that. Yeah, this is going to be one of those things that they're probably doing the right thing, starting with the big three at the beginning. Uh, see, obviously, they can track how much of that stuff gets watched and all that. So if people are really watching it, you know they can say okay well we'll start adding more stuff they did say every month just like the uh, on demand service they'll be adding more stuff um, the uh, CFO did mention that old Raws and old Nitros will be available they didn't say how much or how often but I'm assuming that that will come out sooner or later I'm just glad that they're telling you that will happen um, they did say uncut and uncensored, so there's the uh, thing we were talking about on Monday with what were they going to do with Chris Benoit. Looks like that's going to be true as far as we know right now. Yeah, and that's a wise decision on their part. There's no sense in changing anything. It's history. Let it be. Um, well, you know, we talked about original content, guys, and there's some shows that they've already announced tonight. Now, there might be some more. You guys feel free to add any that I may be missing. Uh, you mentioned the Monday Night War, Sean. That'll be one show. They'll also have Legends House. They'll have a WWE Countdown and, of course, a WrestleMania Rewind. Now, these are some original content that they're going to plan. Uh, I'm excited about Legends House. I don't know about you guys. Anything you would like you know, talk about about these? I think Legends House is going to be hilarious. You can watch the trailer for it on their WWE Network website. It's it's funny. It's probably going to be so ridiculous that it is hilarious. Uh, I like Countdown's a fun idea. Um, there's supposed to be fan votes. And, you know, it, they'll take a huge vote and they'll show you all these things from one to ten is what it looks like. Uh, WrestleMania Rewind is supposed to have you know some of the biggest matches from Mania. They'll have interviews and behind the scenes stuff and all that. Uh, so that sounds really fun. I just, uh, you know, I want more, obviously, but this is what we're getting right now, and it and sounds like awesome stuff. I mean, Monday Night War isn't anything different. They had that on their on-demand show, but that's probably their most popular one besides their roundtables. Yeah, I would really hope they get those roundtables on there. I mean, you can mm-hmm. find most of them on YouTube, but that's if you're a wrestling fan that loves, you know, those old times... I mean, that is something, it, you feel like you learned something sitting there through that 30 minutes or that hour. Um, yeah, Gary, I mean, if you've never checked those out on YouTube, if they ever show up on the network, I would tell you to really uh, seek them out. You learn a lot of oh, stuff, yeah. listening uh, I, to JR and Mean Gene uh, and all that. I enjoyed the one I watched with you for sure, um, and, and I, I do definitely need to check out some more of them. Uh, 
Yeah, like Paul said, I mean, Legends House is going to be awesome. Just because I want to see how they're going to do their take on Surreal Life and how well it's done and how awesome it is. Uh, the Countdown show is kind of like that ESPN show that they did, but, you know, I think it was like at least five or ten years ago, that Who's Number One show. Yeah. Um, but it's like fan voting instead of, or like the NFL countdowns that you see on their network. Um, I want to see how the fan voting is going to be put in. Are they going to have polls that go up while the show's going on, or is it a little bit before the show goes on, or what? That's going to be interesting. And the Monday Night War one is is what it is. Um, like I said, I just hope that that show doesn't detract us from getting other episodes of Attitude Era, Raws, and Nitros that they don't decide to show on that show. Um, same thing with the WrestleManias. You know, I would hope that at some point... Well, I mean, they did include that in the old, all old WWE pay-per-views, so mm-hmm. I would think that WWE applies there, or WrestleMania applies there too, so... Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, we've been talking about a lot of these things, guys. You know, the history, some of the uh, libraries that are really be, you know, showing definitely the biggest parts of history. Now, you know, with a lot of the kids watching, you know, WWE, of course, you know, aims a lot towards kids. Do you think this is going to be a great great opportunity to have, you know, some of these kids grow up and learn more about it just by having these things like the apps and, uh, available to them anywhere they want to go. You know, I'm sure, you know, there's tons of kids that have tablets. I know I saw at Christmas my little five-year-old cousin, second cousins having little tablets. So this is going to be something good. What do you guys think, though? Do you think this will make the future of wrestling fans a lot smarter? Uh, I would certainly hope so, uh, especially if, you have, you know, your folks are into it or, uh, you know, if you're a prospective parent trying to get your kid into it, you just toss them the tablet and start, you know, educating them real fast. It does have parental controls on there. I know we talked about that on Monday, so you can restrict access if you need to, um, uh, to where it'll, it'll block TV14, TV MA stuff uh, for on-demand content, uh, live stuff. You're going to have to sit there and watch with them, obviously. But uh, you know, So I don't see this. It, it might hurt the pay-per-view industry, but it's only going to help them broaden their audience, I think, in the long run. So. Yeah, I think it's great uh, for you to be able to – I mean – that was one thing that really made me get excited was when they started announcing, oh, it's going to be everywhere on everything you already have. I was worried, you know, as we announced on Mondays, and we haven't talked about this, but yes, we have a show that we do every Monday, Midnight Eastern, uh, the Wrestling to the Max episode where we always review Raw, NXT, and that week's TNA Impact. So, plus among other topics and things that we discuss. Um, but anyway, yeah, that, on Monday we talked about this, and I I said I was worried about it only being on the computer or it only being on a mobile device. I mean, I love watching things on my phone, but it's not the same when I have this, you know, big plasma TV and I can't use it to watch, you know, awesome WWE matches. And the best thing is it's all going to be on HD. You don't have to sit there and watch grainy video of uh, stuff because, you know, you're trying to watch it on, on an app or something, so... Yeah. That's great as well. Yeah, Clash of the Champions will be a lot better <laughs> than yeah, watching it for sure. real content, uh, real video footage anyway. Uh, well, you know, there is a lot, you know, that we've got, you know, basically through on this. But I want to know, is there anything else, you guys, any final words on this network that you guys would like to make prevalent or anything? Any thoughts? Anything, guys? Uh, this whole package is a terrific deal if you're at any level of wrestling fandom, whether you're just casual, whether you're way into it like we are, or you're some sort of super fan who is just lives, eats, breathes, and all he does all day is watch wrestling. Uh, 10 bucks a month, you get all the pay-per-views, which is already a steal, uh, you know, for $120 over the year instead of having to pay 60 bucks a month, uh, for HD pay-per-view every month, which totals out to a lot more money than I'm willing to do the math for right now. <laughs> Um, I think they said you know, it was worth uh, over six hundred dollars. Yeah, wow. I mean that's that's nuts. <laughs> so I mean, if you're like us and you got to review shows every month, this is a great way to save you some extra cash. Um, if you're not getting it um, and you can't afford it, then you're silly. Yeah, to me, this is the biggest thing. Those uh, guys that love to stream things. You have no excuse anymore. Uh, WWE is offering you a really great deal. 
And really, the more people that join, the more chances you have of getting more content that you want. They might start adding a, what do you want to see on here if they get to break even and do more? You know, and they're not going to be able to break even if people are still trying to illegally stream things and go try to find things on, on those streaming websites. I'm sure WWE is going to have more license to be able to go and knock that stuff off now because they have an app that does it themselves. I mean, it's really a steal, as Paul said. I mean, how could you not, for 10 bucks a month, for the same price as a Hulu or a Netflix or a listening to music on premium on your phone I mean all these apps are usually anywhere from eight to ten dollars if you love wrestling especially WWE and have any kind of interest in the old stuff this is for you they made this for you just give them the money and you get it I mean it's not like there's anything strings attached here uh, they already said it's going to be all on demand there for you. It's not like you got to be a member for four months before, you know, it's not even like what Disney Movie Club does. Before you get discounts, you got to buy five movies. You know, they're giving it to you all there. Pay your 10 bucks and you get it. I'd love for this to become a channel on TV one day, but it's not going to happen if people don't pay their money. Because that's what they're doing. You know why they're doing this right here? Not only can they get this out faster, but it proves to all those cable companies that said, no, they can't do it. If they break even, they can go, okay, where's our channel now? Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And I think they you know, want to really prove all those naysayers wrong. And I, I, At $10 a month, I think they could reach their goal. We've been talking about different price ranges over the past few months. Uh, we've even talked about up to $15, and so $10 is kind of a steal for all the content you're getting. Heck, you might be able to find $10 worth of change in your couch around the house. Uh, so it's it's definitely worth it, guys. And if you want to know when it's going to start, it's going to start at 11.05 p.m. Eastern after Raw, and that'll be on February 24th. So, guys, go check that out as soon as it comes out. Hopefully, you can go ahead and subscribe. And the first pay-per-view that will be on the network will be WrestleMania 30. So, it's going to be huge, guys. We cannot wait. Um, but now, uh, we're going to move away from the network, and we're actually going to give you a sneak peek of If you never listen to our show, if you never listen to one episode at all, we do a thing called Quick Hits. But we're going to go ahead and give you a few you know, tidbits of how we kind of do this thing. So let's go ahead and run through a few Quick Hits, guys. Give the folks out there who never listened a treat. Uh, well, guys, big news. Caitlin is gone from WWE. That's Hold right. Hold on, Gary. Okay, go ahead. We have a little thing that we like to play. Play this thing. Do, quick hits. do it, sir. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. Sorry, guys. Well, you know, this is a w W2M Extra, and I didn't realize Sean was ready to do that. So <laughs> we usually get it right. Anyway, long story short, Caitlin has gone from WWE, guys. Her last match was uh, this Wednesday night on main event against AJ. So, hey, how do you guys feel about this? Sad, glad? anything uh personally i'm sad i thought she was uh she really bl grew into a very capable hand inside the ring uh her divas run uh her divas championship run unfortunately wasn't too great until they threw aj at her um but i mean it definitely hurts an already weak division uh and she was a very good face whenever they decided to pay attention to her uh so i mean i'm glad she's happy though her and her husband go open some fitness company or something like that uh, which I'm sure they'll do great at because Caitlyn used to be an ex-bodybuilder and won all sorts of awards and stuff. So, uh, you know, good for her, but, you know, it hurts the WWE's Divas division, I think, a lot more than we're going to realize. Yeah, uh, just to clarify that February 24th is the Raw After Elimination Chamber. So, there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I was really sad when... I, I, that got posted in our Facebook group, which, yes, we have a Wrestling to the Max Facebook group that you can go join and talk with other fans about wrestling stuff. Um, but, yeah, uh, Chris had posted that, and I was kind of sad because I was always a big fan of Caitlyn's, not only because she's, you know, beautiful and whatnot, but she was, grow she was like, getting better as a wrestler every time. 
I mean, she was really like becoming like another Beth Phoenix for the WWE, and and they tried with her, but it was kind of weird how they did. She just totally went off TV all of a sudden, and uh, you know they had made she announced the thing about her getting engaged, and and then all of a sudden it was she was doing a fitness thing, and so it kind of didn't come as a surprise really. Uh, but it, it it does suck because it was one of those divas that the rare divas that WWE has on their actual television roster, not in NXT, that they can pop in against anyone and they can have a good match, you know. At, at least, you know, she got to go out against her best friend. And if you read uh, Big E's uh, Twitter, his is kind of sad too because... Basically, Big E, AJ, and, and her were kind of, you know, all best friends, and it's it's kind of sad to see them have to lose her. But who knows? Maybe she'll come back. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, people always, you know, things happen in life, and they always make a decision based on, you know, what their current situation is, but you never know. The future may hold different cards. You may see a return uh, for Caitlyn. So we just, you know, keep your fingers crossed. You know, and I think, you know, I think she's from Houston, isn't she? Or may I wrong? I think yeah, it's somebody she's from else. Texas, yeah, she's yeah. from Houston, so she is a Texas. So I mean, I, I, it's kind of cool and it's kind of sad to see you know one of our our you know fellow Texans leave. But anyway, that's you know kind of good for her in a way. I feel because she just got engaged. She's going to get married, uh, and you know she's going to have to live her own life now. And I think she's going down a different path, and that's better than her struggling within the company and having different things pull on her in different directions. Uh, uh, someone who has left, not WWE, but left wrestling recently, that name is Matt Morgan. That's right, guys. He is not wrestling anymore. He's out of the business. He's going on to follow a career uh, and other efforts, but he's also wanting to focus on boy, being more of a dad. Uh, so what do you guys think about this? Is this a loss to the wrestling business? Uh, you know, at this day, probably not, uh, but, you know, he leaves behind a lot of missed opportunities, both, uh, I mean, within the WWE and TNA, TNA especially, they were on the cusp of making him one of their top guys when they really needed a new star, and it just never happened because TNA got gun shy or whatever reason, um, so, I mean, that sucks for him then, but, I mean, if you're going to quit to be a better dad and all that stuff, then it's kind of hard to be mad at him, you know? <laughs> Yeah, true. I mean, yeah, you, you noted all the missed opportunities. I mean, they were really trying to do something with him in TNA, and I'm glad they kind of just finally said, you know what, <laughs> we're done trying. Uh, the OWB kind of screwed up at the beginning with that stuttering gimmick and all that. Yeah. I don't know who thought that was going to get over. Um, but anyway, I guess they try weird things all the time. But, uh, yeah, you know, I can't fault a guy for wanting to be a dad. Uh, me and Gary are dads ourselves, and I don't know what I would do without being able to see my daughter every day. I know Gary, his is much younger than mine, or she is much younger than mine, and, you know, I'm sure he feels the same way, so I can totally understand Matt Morgan's plight there. He was taking a lot of shots at the wrestling business, saying that, in this job, he's going to get paid pretty much the same, and he gets to be there every night. Whereas with a, you know, a wrestling company, you may not be able to be there every night. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know if he's really, you know, I, it's kind of weird. It's kind of funny to me that he would take a shot at the business that he tried so hard to stay a part of, a business that he worked and worked and worked to keep, a, you know, a stable job in. And all of a sudden now he's taking shots. I think it's kind of a low to do that because, I mean, there's several people uh, that probably are offended right now because of that. The only reason I say that is because you've got tons of wrestlers, WWE, TNA, who don't have that opportunity to be with their kids. But it's not because they're just being jerks. It's just because that's their livelihood. That's what they know. And, you know, I don't think it means that they're less of a parent or, you know, less caring uh, because of it, it just means that it's the career. I mean, and I can't tell you how many executives never see their kids, and they, you know, don't are they're not in the wrestling business; they're in the banking business. You know what I mean? So it's just you know, the way it is. And I just think it's kind of funny for him to be taking shots like that. Um, it's nice for him to be able to do it right now, but who's to say his new job won't have him flying around the country? You just don't know. 
Um, but anyway, I mean, I don't really know if it's a bad thing for Matt Morgan to be gone. To me, he really wasn't super, super special. <laughs> That's just me personally. Um, but anyway, let's talk about something else real quick, guys. TNA has a new TV deal in the UK. That's right. Challenge TV is signed to deal with them. It's no Sky Network, but hey, it's a deal. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, it's probably best news they've had in a while. <laughs> uh, being we, they've had a recent slew of bad news fly at them. Uh, they are very popular in UK. Uh, they always have huge shows over there, and they always do really well over there. So I'm sure this is great news for them. But it might not be because you know if they don't have a home for Impact, then you know Londoners might get to see what the inside of an Alabama high school looks like, as Sean would like to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, not just a home for Impact, but uh, in October 2014, that contract comes up with Spike TV as well, and there's supposedly rumblings, which they're rumblings, and I don't think they're gonna WWE is even gonna think about going back to Spike because they won't give him the money that WWE wants. So I, TNA is still they're looking for uh, you know making sure that that contract gets renewed with Spike, which. TNA did not get over 2 million viewers, which is what Spike wanted the last time that they renewed a deal, but who knows. Spike did want to buy them not too long ago, so whatever. Um, this is good for TNA. Uh, the Challenge Network is a free network. It's not something where they're paying to be seen like Sky. So, you know, at least they're getting on TV, but that channel isn't the greatest channel in the world, so... Yeah, it is what it is. At least they have a TV deal. And they are popular in the UK. But I think it's a little bit overblown, honestly. But we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah. Like I said, of all the things that TNA's heard just this week, I guess that's the best thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, at least I have one thing in their corner, right, guys? You know, and, and I think this is good and no matter what. I mean, it, for them to do this, uh, it's a step forward and not a step backwards. So that that's always a positive thing. Well, guys, not to cut it too short, but I do have one more thing we want to go ahead and talk about before we leave. Uh, let's talk about Dolph. You know, Dolph recently had another concussion. Man, he, he is becoming like Steve Young and Troy Aikman. It's the poor guy. Uh, but apparently it was caused by Ryback. Kind of tell me your feelings about this situation. Uh, well, I mean, it, it sucks for Dolph, obviously, who's still struggling to get back on his feet after he got the rug taken out of him the first time around last year. Um, you know, it's not good news for Ryback either, who's already been in hot water, and now he's in even hotter water, apparently. Um, which is weird. I'm sure they're going to drop him out to Big E now, if that ever was going to be a thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it sucks all the way around. You know, you never want to see anybody get hurt, especially somebody as talented as Dolph. So. Yeah, I really hate it. Dolph seems to... I mean, not that he was going anywhere right now, but you never know. They might have tried to start something with him, and then here we go again, proving that even though it's not his fault, you know, Jack Swagger and Ryback caused these concussions for him, which shouldn't happen, but they do, and Dolph just seems to be the guy that gets really unlucky. And as uh, it's been proven many times... Injuries hurt you in wrestling uh, more than almost any other job, uh, even in pro sports, because that backup usually is not as good as you. And most of the time, even if they do wind up going on a win streak with you, they'll readily replace you once again because that guy's making a lot of money and they got to make sure that they can justify paying that guy that money. Uh, in wrestling, when you're gone, they're ready to make another star in front of you. And then when you come back, that may, that, spa yeah, that spot may not be there mm -hmm. for you anymore. Mm -hmm. So de de Definitely true. And, and concussions are one of those things that once you have one, it's more easy uh, to receive another one. Uh, this scares me because he's getting more constant. And the fact that his career could be in jeopardy, that's what terrifies me. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, what do you him guys and Del Rio, do? man. They both seem to be continually getting those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would just be so sad to see his career cut short. I would, I would be very, very sad to see that happen. If, and I'm not wishing anything on the guy. 
Um, well, guys, it is time for us to wrap this up. This is just a Wrestling to the Max Extra. If you really enjoyed this YouTube video, uh, please, hey, join us on Monday nights, midnight Eastern. Uh, this is a show that we like to, you know, always, you know, have a three-hour full show. But this is just a little bit tidbit, kind of a sneak preview to you people who have never joined us before. Um, but anything else you'd like to say before we get out of here, Sean, Paul? Uh, Go for it. You know, we we did this just because the network was big. And we figured, hey, we've had this YouTube page that we really had never used. I thought, hey, why not? You know, it's something that people are going to want to probably listen to what – what we have to say about it, at least our fans on the Facebook page and on the Twitter at Wrestling Two Max on Twitter. That uh, before we get to Monday, that way it doesn't seem like it's totally old hat by then. Uh, yeah, just make sure you listen to us uh, this Monday. We're going to talk a little bit more about the network. I'm sure more details will come out by then. Uh, we're going to be doing a segment that we like to call "What We Watched This Week." which is something where we take it outside of our realm that we don't see all the time. And this week is going to be uh, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 8. I know that happened last weekend, but hey, it's, it's going to be fun for us to watch, right? Um, and Paul's already watched it, so he gets to kind of talk us through the whole thing. Uh, we also review Raw, TNA Impact, and NXT every week, so you want to be there for that. Um, of course, it's live on Spreaker. Every Monday night, around midnight Eastern, after Raw goes off. And then you can always listen to us on demand on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Xbox Music, uh, BlackBerry. Uh, you can find us on the Facebook page. It's on 41mania.com, in the game zone, on the get side of the game's top five. It's uh, on dirtsheets.com as well. It's on so many different things. Go look for us. You'll find it. Um, thank you all for watching, listening, and whatever, anytime that you do, um, you guys are great. Darling. Any last words, Paul? Sean stole everything I was going to say. <laughs> all right, there you go. Oh, nice. <laughs> always blaming me, huh? Uh, that's the culprit right there. So anyway, Michael, thanks for joining us once again. We'll see you guys Monday night. If you're not living life to the max, you're not living life at all. You know it. We'll be right